All right, so trace tables are going to be something that pops up in your paper. So trace tables, are it, I can almost guarantee it's in almost every exam paper going. So you need to understand them. But not only this, you need to understand how for loops. So we've got here the question. This is one row of a bitmap image, and it uses different shades of gray. Now, this row is going to store these numbers, which represent the colors. So you need to have some context to what's happening here. We've got 56, 34, 0, 99, 72, 23. Now, in your exam, assume, unless it tells you otherwise, that the index is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just assume that, please. So, new row. There's a brand new row which is set up blank. Now, for i is 0 to 5 because my array is starting at 0 to 5. That's why I've just done that. If row i is greater than 50, the new row becomes 99. <coughs> so we're going to look at each iteration here. All right. So we're starting at 0. All right. So we're starting at 0, and we're looking at the first number. Is 0, so is the value in 0, row i is referring to that, higher than 50? Right, so what is new row i going to be? Right, where am I going to write it on here? Under which number? Yes, well done, okay? It's going to be because the value of <coughs> i is 0, and we're on 0. So it's going to be 99. Now, what's happening to the value of i? If they've left it blank here, you need to fill this out. What happens to the value of i? Because it was originally 0. It increased to 1. So you need to show that that's gone up. The reason why, all right, is because that is an assignment. Wherever you see an arrow that is an assignment, something's being assigned there. So the first time around, it was assigned zero. Second time around, it's assigned. Third time around, three, four, Five. So the golden rule to tra trace tables is if you see an assignment, a new value has to go in. Now, if the value doesn't change, then you don't do anything with it. So on the second time around, let me just, uh, on the second time around, when it went up to one, all right, was 34 greater than 50? So nothing happened there, all right? Right, third time around, when I was up to number 2, was 0 greater than 55, 50? Yes. Are you sure about that? Value 2, Sorry. it's 0. Yeah, so, so the second time around, again, we've done nothing there. Don't scribble on this, by the way. This is just me trying to help you figure it out. Now, when that's gone up to 3, the value is 99. Is 99 higher than 50? Yeah. All right, so which position are we in? Three. Pay attention to it, yeah? So I'm going over to three. 99. And I'm not writing 99 in because that's the value in there. It's because my rule says if it's greater than 50, I need to write in the number 99. Right. Next one is 72 in position four. Is 72 higher than 50? So what's the value going to be? 99. And value 23 at position 5? No. So do I write anything in there? No, I don't, because nothing was assigned. <coughs> so only where you see the arrow or an output, because it might have said here at the end of this, if it said output, imagine it said output... Um, new row 
I don't know, zero, okay, you'd need to make sure that if there was a column for an output, you'd need to make sure you acknowledge the output somewhere, all right? But the output would always go on the next line, all right? So put your output on the next line. Hope that's kind of helped you visualize how to fill out trace tables. So whenever you see an assignment, there, there is a value that's changed. If the value doesn't change, don't write it in. Because how easy would it have been? Because I've seen this before. So this is wrong. I'm going to put this in when people do this. They assume that I've got to repeat it because that's a, it's still that value. You don't need to write that in. You only write it in when you change it. Because that value is not changed now, so it will still be 99. So uh, there's no point in me writing that in because it will or, or always be there. Unless <laughs> it happened to be that it was referring to that position. Is that why you keep all the others the same? Because they haven't changed from zero. Yeah. So that's why there's nothing being written down there. Is that what your question was going to be a minute ago? Yeah. Now the purpose of this algorithm is... What is the purpose of the algorithm? Does it change the image from kind of six shades of grey to just like black or white? That's it. That's exactly it. Refer to the context of the question. Because I can guarantee that some of you would have looked at this and go, Oh, the purpose of the, this algorithm is to change the a shade to 19, uh, to write the number 99 in if the number's higher than 50. No. You need to refer back to the context of the question, which is talking about the, the information and the shades of grey. If it's giving you information it wants, it's probably going to ask you to reuse it somewhere. Hopefully that makes sense. So if it gives you information, make sure that you utilise it all right, so the answer to this should have been converts row or grayscale to black and white. Now, what I will do so, so that you can just recap on that for revision, those videos I'll put on YouTube so you can watch them back. <coughs> Question four. And verbally going to leave to you to do. So just quickly, develop an algorithm using either pseudocode or flowchart. Again, refer to what it's doing. It checks if the user has entered a string and represents a valid code. The machine code is valid if it contains exactly eight characters. <coughs> And all of the characters are either a 0 or a 1. What I will say is you will need to use len. And you will need to go through. You'll need to convert that instruction and look at the len of it using string operations. So remember, if I put the word in, if I've got a string... <coughs> If I, my string equals Mr. Chambers, if I wanted to look through each of those letters, right, string zero would be M. That's all I'm going to say to help you with that question and see how you get on with it. Question before I stop this video. When it says Prompt means you have to have a prompt on the screen that says output yes. Number one, yep. Can you do len on a string? Yes, you can. So you can also do len of that string. You can. Alright? Let's see how we get on.